And here is where I will probably stop creating more tests with TDD because it will be repeating of the same content of the other parts of the course. But let's run through other tests. So I would simulate that in my mind while speaking and you will get the idea. So for example, our next test is to test the pagination. So then you write the test simulating the product factory with 11 products and try to assert that it doesn't contain the 11th record. For now, you don't have pagination yet at that point. Then you go into controller, change that to paginate, change the index blade to contain the links, and then that test becomes green. The next test is about admin. So you realize you have roles by then. Then you realize that you need to have this admin as a separate user. Then probably by this point, you realize you need some kind of setup method for that product test to have those as variables this admin and this user because they keep repeating. And then you realize you need a separate middleware for is admin and a separate roles and permissions system. Or for example, in the most simple ways, just is admin field in the database and you build that middleware and you build the functionality to just see that button. Then protect that on the middleware level on the back end with assert status 200 instead of 403 if the middleware doesn't go through. So you write probably first two tests for the button that admin sees the button and non-admin doesn't see. And then you fix those two tests to be green. Then the next pair of tests is about actually accessing the page. And then you build that functionality after the tests and test by test, you write the test first as a scenario, how you think it would need to work. For example, you agree that after successful creation of the product, it should redirect to products list. So you assert redirect first and then build the redirect on the back end in the actual controller. So the logic is the same. Write test scenario, it will fail by default, and then you write code to make it green. So as I said, I will not repeat the same thing for other features because it's the same content I already explained in the other parts of the course. To conclude with TDD, it's your personal preference. It seems like it does take more time, but at the same time, as I was explaining a bit earlier, it makes you think a bit deeper about how exactly the functionality should work and what could be the edge cases. If you write the code first, you may forget about those edge cases and write only shiny scenarios. For me personally, I don't use TDD that much. Sometimes I do for some features, for some functionality where I think I need to think deeper upfront. But usually, personally, I'm a bigger fan of writing functionality first, then write tests, and then fix the functionality if something goes wrong, and then jumping between code and tests to make it all work together. So at this point, I want to conclude this course because the goal of this course was to start testing, explain the beginning of testing for beginners who have never done that or done that on the very minimal level. So at this point, you should be good to start writing tests for various simple scenarios, just repeating the same logic of arrange, act, assert, creating dummy data with factories and using various asserts. And while planning this course, I decided to divide it into two separate courses. So as I said, this course is completed for beginners, but there will be another course I will prepare, hopefully in a month or so, maybe quicker for advanced testing. This will be for those people who have some testing experience, but want to go deeper in testing more complex scenarios for bigger and more complicated projects. Of course, you can continue getting the knowledge about testing from official Laravel docs, and that's why I opened that page. So testing section contains quite a lot of those things. But my idea for the upcoming course is to have as many practical examples as possible. So I will review practical examples of real tests in bigger open source projects from companies like Spati or even Laravel open source projects. They contain a lot of tests too, and we will learn from that. Then we will talk about faking some scenarios, like faking the data for sending emails, for events, for queues, how to test external APIs, how to test your services, and how to mock the services or external classes. These are all quite advanced topics, which you don't need to be honest if you are starting with testing. So I envision that as two kind of steps in the career of a developer. First step with testing is to just start doing tests which you should be good at by now if you have watched this course. So keep practicing. 
And then the next separate step is to raise the practical level of tests with bigger applications and more complex scenarios. So we will talk about that in the course, hopefully coming in the next month or so. So I go start the preparation for that now, and I hope you enjoyed this course. If you have any more questions, shoot in the comments below, and let's discuss everything together. See you guys in other videos.